Hi and welcome to Angling For You. You join me in an insanely wet, crazy, can't believe I'm out in uh, kind of weather today. Uh, John is at Aqua Fishery. Um, I apologise in advance if the filming doesn't come out so great. I literally have a carrier bag over the top of the camera. <laughs> so I can't even see what it's filming if I'm honest. So today what we're going to try and do um, is worm and caster, chop worm and caster. Um, gets used this time of year uh, quite a lot. Uh, really good bait for silvers as we know but every fish likes worms and casters um, so it's something getting you in preparation for the winter especially that we can try out today so I'm just going to run you through the kit now I am not on the lily pads but I'm close to so and here's some carp about so I haven't gone silly light like I would do in the winter but I again I am I am heavy so I've got 11 hollow on um, Preston so obviously not not the most massive elastic in the world so you know, it is pretty light, um, and that's 013 main line. And we've got down to the point 0.3 uh, gram uh, float today, and sort of basically what we, we're looking really is something with a decent bristle. And, and you know, we may get a bit of tow with the rain and a little bit of breeze across. We just want to make sure that we, we have a little bit of stability. Um, I've got two number eights under that, um, and it's really shallow, unfortunately, this time of, for this time of year. It's um, it's not the best of uh, conditions uh, and then we've got a, a number and uh, number 10 dropper and um, the hook link is 012 down to a, a little tiny size 18 camera sambi 911 and like i say it's what just approaching the two foot uh, which is crazy this time of year but they've had a lot lost a lot of water here so uh, it's not definitely cold yet um, we could go lighter than that when it gets uh, more into the winter but you know for for today that's that's gonna do as well so the bait wise right so got the dendrobina worms and just move my casters to the side for now but the way that we do it um you, you can get worm scissors which has just got like multi blades and stuff like that but the way i do it is just get your dendrobinas i always have a separate container and snip those dendrobinas up and this is going to be the feed so I've got these worms this side and this is what I'm going to put out in the little cad pot that I've got on the top of my pole. I'll put one small um, pot in to start off with and, and with it being winter uh, or getting to winter you don't want to be feeding as much so you just want to be dribbling in a few little bit of pinching. I'll show you when we get onto, on, on, onto the box. So I've got a few casts in there but I'll put a couple more in and you're just going to mix that up and I'd like to do it in batches so uh, you know every so often I, I like the new fresh um, little bit uh, and I do them in stages so I just do a little a bit there and that'll probably do what five or six pots, uh, little cad pots um, out there and then I'll cut some more fresh. So what I'll do is I'll give it a spin round, like I say camera wise I'll do my best. Um, so like I said before, a little cad pot on top, I want to look at having um, the worms and the caster in there but just only about half full just to top it up and i'll, I'll be staying out a bit longer than i would normally um and uh, you know and if i'm getting a good concession of fish then you know we'll keep the feed going and we'll talk through that as we go um but i'm going to start with a double uh, or single caster so probably start with single caster to start off with um and then once i get a confidence i might get, and i feel that there's some fish there i might i might go to get a worm uh, to go with a worm um, but let's start off with a. In fact, I'll put double caster on um, to start off with. It's not the easiest peg to ship out, but the reason I chose it is because it's got a little bit of a feature and it's. I want to say it's dry, but it's uh, drier than the other pegs in regards to. Uh, the other ones are just getting absolutely mashed so I do understand that probably the camera angle from this way is not the greatest to see where in front of my peg once I've uh, part of this in and see if we can have one I'll uh, I'll move around the camera um, to a place where I can try and uh, get a better angle so today we're probably looking for silvers um, most likely our skimmers um, an eyed and then you know every so often you may you may see a carp so just gonna 
tip that that feed in I'll just gently lower the bait in we've got a short line as we can um, to to allow us a quick bite like I said we've got that tiny that tiny little uh, number 10 dropper that's um, about three inch away from the hook it won't spook them but what it enables is to get a little bit of weight behind the strike straight away so if you're getting the sort of fast bites you know from uh, from skimmers most nine times out of ten uh, you can hit them and I hope everybody appreciates the, the dedication it proves how much I, uh, I, I valued the channel and, 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 and teaching um, new methods you know a bit of dedication it's uh, it's not the best of weather today uh, but I wanted to get out and do a little bit of filming at my times quite scarce with work sometimes and even though it's pretty dull out here I'll do my best to try and get a bit of footage for you Oh, thank you. to the first fish of the, the session. Mm -hmm. It's a lovely, lovely skimmer to start the day. Let's get him in and then we'll get see if we can get that camera angle, angle changed up. Lovely fish to start the session. Let's get him back and I'll get that to camera angle changed and see if we can we can have another. Right guys, so I, I, the first fish I had that lovely skimmer, I actually um, 
I missed a bite on the caster, um, a weird, a weird bite, and I and I did think to myself it could potentially be some uh, decent skimmers there. So um, I put on a a little piece of dendrobina, um, and I uh, I had a bite instantly, and th that nice skimmer. So what we'll do is we'll go straight back down, see if we can uh, see if there's anything still there. Hopefully we're gonna there's gonna be a few. Um, if, like I say, it's not full winter now, you need to uh, still keep the feed in mind because obviously skimmers don't don't hang about. They, they, they do eat some food. Um, I don't want to overfeed them. Just steady, a little and often, keep them competing. Um, once we've uh, had this one, I'll, um, I'll I'll try and get close as I can to camera and I'll try and show you how I hook the worm on. Now a lot of people when they're fishing this, you know, they get a good fish and they feel that there's some fish there and they start to pile the bait and now when it's getting colder, the fish are eating that bait and they're not eating anything else. So it's important that you you do cut down when you go into winter. To try, try and not get into that habit of thinking, oh, tomorrow I'll put in the more fish I'll get. It doesn't work like that in winter. You need to just steady little amounts to keep them competing, try and catching fish by fish rather than get it aiming to get a load of fish into the peg see that one's into another fish now and that's an acrobatic carp that we've got on this time a little carp so as you can see that 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 11 olive still works really well we've took taken it away from from the area well, it's not it's actually a skimmer an acrobatic skimmer sorry we're gonna have to go over the the, uh, the camera i thought it were a little carp first <laughs> when you're fishing on these elevated pegs as well it's uh, important to uh, to know where you are. Now that's a lovely fish, and this is this is what really the video was going to be all about today, and this is what I expected to catch. Um, and I'm I'm super super pumped that we that we've got a few uh, a few skimmers there. I'm just going to get this one unhooked for you, and uh, we'll, we'll get it held up because it's a lovely fish. This one. And see another beautiful fish um lovely stamper skimmer get him uh, back in the net and back into the water a quick one to show you actually while i'm on it is if you notice i've i, I use the speed step net uh, speed x nets i've gone for a slightly smaller um slightly shallow net um now we've stepped it up into winter or, or into the autumn should I say um, we can it's good to to look at the size of your nets and sort of tailor them to the, the style of fish that you catch him and obviously that being a, being a smaller stamp although that was a good fish uh, you know it's just uh, important to uh, to do that so what I'm going to do is get rid of that worm that's on there that try and give me hands a little wipe and I'll, I'll have to stand up, I think, to try and do this, but we'll, we'll have a go. Okay. We're coming to you. Right, so, worm-wise, um, like I say, the dendrobina worms, you'll see that they've got sort of a little join there at the top. If you put your fingers on the join, a bit savage and you pull off pretty much like the head that's going to allow you to one release juices but two to give you a place to hook on so if i just free him up in my hand as you can see so all i'm going to do then with a the hook is just get the the hook facing downwards in my hand obviously it's wet and mr worm does not want to be hooked rightly so Let's get that sorted. So there we go. So we're going to up straight through that that part of the uh, the top part. If we can keep the bugger still, stay. Uh, okay. So he's up through that 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 sort of part where we made the uh, the pull the top off, and we've got a little bit dangling. The fish will just hit that and should be in business. So let's uh, let's get back out there and uh, 
see if there is some uh, some fish still about uh, get that little bit of feed in a little bit of that chop worm and that that caster into into that pot essential this time of year as well uh, when you when you're fishing this method always have some um, you know a decent towel or something with you maybe obviously you, you guys have seen that recently just uh, bought one of the venti side trays with the the, ho the hood really happy with it um, I think whatever way you go the Garbo the, the Prestons the Reeve they've all got their own different style hoods um, but yeah no, no it's I'm really happy with it get going really well with it and it's uh, obviously keeping my uh, towel and everything dry and my bait obviously I've soaked the casters in water um, and uh, just allows them to sink and we've shot this flow it's not it's not shot down so it's invisible uh, or just a tiny bristle it, there's a little bit of bristle showing that's mainly because there's a little bit of a ripple on the water and I want to be able to see it, but it, it, it's shot in a way that it's delicate enough that you know a small touch from a skimmer or a roach it's going to go under as, as, as it gets colder and colder sometimes you have to dot it more and more um, and then use maybe a bit of bristle grease to keep just a tip showing but like those bites well, both decent bites from that skimmer from those skimmers and you know <laughs> it's a little bit smaller fish there it looks like a little perch um the uh, important thing is that you don't you know you don't panic and and start to uh, you know hammer a load of bait in those lovely little miniature perch there beautiful little fish you can see beautiful in miniature there little perch and as we all know perch absolutely love uh, worms but we would prefer um, those uh, lovely big skimmers to come back that's for sure I'm just going to put that worms pretty much untouched um, slid up the line so we're going to go back out with that one and now I've had perch in here um, it's over two pound actually uh, usually in the very cold months is when I've caught them but there is some what well there used to be should I say some whopper perch in here um, but in summer they obviously don't get a look in uh, with, the, with the skimmers about and the uh, and the carp but you do you do catch them in winter and certainly if you're gonna put worm on there's always a chance of a of a perch like that's uh, A positive start you know we've had uh, straight in straight, straight under there we missed that one but um, that, that's positive you know we're getting bites every every drop and we're uh, you know we've had pretty much a, a fisher put in which is uh, is great considering the, the rain but to be honest judging how, uh, how, how actually how low uh, rustics is at the moment I think it's uh, only a bonus that we're getting this rain. I mean, not if you're the poor bugger that sat out here in the getting soaked to death, like. But um, I just hope that when I look back at this footage, we actually got some some d half decent footage. Because, uh, like I say, we are literally the camera is under a carrier bag, um, and that is no exaggeration. It is got a carrier bag over the top in order for me. To, to film because otherwise it will be absolutely soaked um, so I do hope the, the footage does come out okay all right so again we'll just put a little bit more feed in it's a bit of a precarious situation trying to ship out here so you just need to keep, pay attention to where where your uh, your lines go in go into that same spot
when when you're fishing it though if you're fishing it deeper um you know on the deck obviously always on the deck but if if you're fishing it deeper again that was another uh, little perch um what i would suggest is that you know you do have a, a, a bulk to get that bait down there um and get if you're going to catch you wanting to catch big skimmers especially you know they're on the bottom you want to get that bait down to the bottom where they are um it's usually a roach and your perch that'll intercept it mid mid water feels like another uh, nice skimmer and uh, it, it's just getting it down obviously we've only got sort of just under oh it's not it's uh, it's cruising i think nice was it a little rod let's have a look oh, that's a beautiful fish they really 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 wanted that that bait Took that right down, so let's get this out first and we'll, we'll hold him up. There we go. Beautiful fish. A little bar of gold, absolutely. Beautiful fish. Catch plenty of them all day. Let's let him go. Let's have a check of that bait because sometimes when they hit it, it can be okay. So let's have a look. So just need a little bit of uh, nipping off and retouching. There we go. Put some of that, some of that chopped worm and caster back in there. Like I say, we're not, we're not. I'm not overfeeding we're just going with little tiny amounts and that's keeping the fish competitive you now we've had three different species so far so that's always always fun that back down on the spot another another little perch <laughs> definitely could do without those like I say they're, they're a nice fish perch but not what we're looking for not, not, not what we're looking for today that is for sure Beautiful little fish though. Sometimes obviously with that having that um that carp it can spook can spook the fish. Um and maybe just cut a couple of the skimmers and you know that carp is a bit bigger fish, sometimes spooks the others off. Fingers crossed they'll, uh, they'll come back. <laughs> Try and have another one for camera and then uh, we'll finish her up and get this camera somewhere nice. Oh, well at least it's a bit better fish that we've hooked. Um, feels like another skimmer. That's a bonus. Uh, we're not finishing on a on a little perch. So that's a... He says that before he gets it in, but... No, fingers crossed we'll get it. I'll get the, the skimmer in. I might, I might have another drop if, if there's one here. I might have another drop, actually. Um, just because I love catching. Oh, it's an hide. Nice hide as well. Shuff me. Uh, there, there, and we're in for a good day, because there's a clonker. I do love eye fishing, as you all know. You've watched, you're watching the maggots se series. 
and you've just watched the maggot series, then you'll know. And I'll just get this one under control first because I don't want it to uh, to jump out. Just get it unlocked, and I'll j gently try and uh, show you it. Just everything is wet and that's slippy at the moment, including the fish. So I'm going to hold him over the neck because he's a bit of a bit of a jumper. Steady. Try and turn this net round a little bit so we can get get it in shot. Because he's a nice fish. And I would like to hold him up, but it's very, very wet. So we'll have a try. There we go. Come and try that chopped worm and caster. I mean, fish like this, absolutely stunning. Let's get him back. As we all like to say, let's have one more drop and see if there's another, another eye down there. And uh, see if we can have him. What a lovely fish that. I'd rather catch a big bag of Idar skimmers uh, than carp any day. And I know that might sound a bit mad to some of you that are really into F1 and carp fishing. And so am I, I really enjoy it. There's something special about going back to simple methods like chopworm and caster in the colder months and catching these big eyed and these these big skimmers it, it really is somewhat special for me it takes me back right back to the childhood when none of these commercials were uh, were readily available and catching a even a four or five pound cart was you know an absolute red light a day um, now they're a dime a dozen and you uh, <laughs> You probably think that you've had a, a poor session in the summer, especially if you if you haven't caught a double figure usually. Or are close to it. Gently drop that back down. You can have one more fish. Straight under and it is a perch to finish the session after all that. <laughs> but we, we caught on our side, so uh, we can't really say it, can we? Um, let's get this little bad boy sorted and back in the water. I'm sure he uh, wants to go back in as fast as possible. Looked perfectly on that top lip. Lovely little fish. So. I appreciate um, you uh, you all put, putting up with me today. I'm hoping the camera footage has, has, has shot some good stuff, and uh, you know it's it's been rough. It's it is a rough day. It's not stopped raining. Uh, we haven't been here too long, which shows how productive uh, the method is. And uh, you know, hopefully uh, you enjoy it. So uh, I've, I've put up quite a few uh, things. If you haven't, this this will be coming up after the series. Is so uh, have a look at the maggot series that. Um, it's three parts and that will be really really good for going into this time of year um, check out the Bobco tackle uh, tour with um, May Potter really really good and obviously shows you how much stuff and gear they've got uh, fantastic uh, tackle shop that is and online as well which makes it even easier uh, so yeah check that one out and have a look at all of his other videos I try and tailor uh, the videos coming now to, to more cold water and autumn fishing fingers crossed we'll get some piking and stuff like that done but um, as always, thanks for watching, uh, share and uh, subscribe. Uh, we've, we've smashed the 50 like um, button uh, the last few videos, so let's go for 70 this time. Um, keep us, I'll keep posting up, there's going to be a Christmas giveaway uh, coming sort of December as well, so keep your eye out for that. Um, share and uh, subscribe. Uh, thanks a lot for, for watching as always. Uh, join us on the Facebook group, Angling For You and uh, join us on the Instagram uh, angling underscore for you and uh, both of those are great for sharing uh, videos and uh, pictures and asking questions 
smash me in the comments as well if you uh, if you want to look at uh, me to answer any questions they've they've been doing really active as well i'll be looking doing another live feed on the angling for you uh, uh, youtubers uh, sorry and the angling for you uh, group on facebook as well so keep your eye out for that and thanks a lot for watching tight lines Thank you.